Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Line Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. So today we're going to try something completely new. In the past, all of the boards that I've soldered together have all been through hole. But when I was at Kansas Fest, I wanted to get an EDD Plus board from Ultimate Micro. And the only one that Anthony Martino had was unassembled. And this is actually surface mount components. So I decided I would go ahead and give it a try. And so he gave me a few pointers on how to do surface mount soldering. So let's go ahead and see if we can make it work. All right, so here's my EDD Plus card from Ultimate Micro. And this card is for the Apple II Plus and Apple IIe computers, and it essentially lets you copy disks at the bit level. So this is the essential data duplicator. And what it does is it intercepts all of the data from the floppy drive and then reroutes it to the floppy controller. So all the data comes from the floppy drive through here, goes through all the glue logic and the chips, and then out to the floppy controller. And so when you combine this with some software that is available from Bruto Deluxe called I'm Fed Up, you can actually capture all of the disk image data, say from a copy protected disk, save it out to a special format called EDD, and then process that later. So it's basically a way of just copying any sort of copy protected disk at the bit level. So what we need to do is actually assemble the card and there's a bunch of components on the front, which is just a bunch of uh, logic chips, and then a couple headers for the floppy controller, and then finally a whole bunch of surface mount components on the back. So what I'm gonna do first is actually clean all of this with some rubbing alcohol, just to make sure it's all nice and clean and free of dirt and oils. And then we'll go ahead and do all of the surface mount components. So one interesting thing about the uh, SMD or surface mount devices that I didn't realize is how the actual codes are done on the resistors. So these call for things like a 472. And so what this is, is this is actually a 4700 ohm resistor. So the first two digits, the 47 is the significant digits and then the two is the number of decimal places. So 472 is four, 47 times 10 to the second or 4700. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting little note. So we basically, we have a fuse, we have a whole bunch of resistors, and we have a whole bunch of filter capacitors to solder onto this side. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is put some flux on the parts that I'm gonna actually solder. So I'm gonna put some on this pad and this pad, and I'm gonna start with the fuse. Uh, just because that's one of the bigger components. And I'm following a technique that I found uh, by watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos. And so hopefully this will work. I'm sure I'll get lots of comments about how I'm doing it totally wrong. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is put solder on one of the pads, then put the component down and remelt the solder and then put the solder on the other half of the component. All right, important safety tip. Uh, these little surface mount components are so tiny, don't try and blow on them to remove dust because you will blow them onto the floor just like I did, but luckily I found it. Alright, next I'm going to do a 3900 ohm resistor. So on the board this is marked as 392. So that's 3900, and on the resistor itself it's marked 3901, which means also a 3900, uh, but since it has four digits, that just means it's more precise. It's a high precision resistor, uh, so it's kind of confusing. So again, I put some flux on both pads. I'm gonna go ahead and put some solder onto one of the pads. And then, Place the resistor. So when you're using your tweezers, be sure to grip it 
securely, but not so securely that the little resistor flies out of the tweezers. And then I'm just gonna remelt that. And go ahead and put some solder on the other pad. All right, so I've got all the surface mount components all soldered down. Uh, hopefully they're all good. I also went ahead and I soldered in the headers for the cables. So I've got the one that goes to the floppy drive and the one that goes to your floppy controller in your Apple IIe, as well as the two resistors uh, which control the LEDs. So next thing to do is just solder on all of the logic chips here on the board and then we can go ahead and try out the card. Uh, first thing actually what I'm going to do is rinse the board with some isopropyl alcohol just to get off all the traces of the flux on this side and we'll let it dry and then we'll go ahead and we'll solder on the logic chips. Okay so we have everything soldered into our EDD Plus card. Everything looks good, all the chips are in position and the surface mount components look like they're all on. So let's go ahead and we'll plug it into the Apple II and see if we can copy some copy protected disks. All right, so I've got the EDD card installed in the Apple IIe and I've got it in slot five right next to my disk two card. And you can see I have the ribbon cable from my disk two drive coming into the EDD. And then I have the shorter six inch ribbon cable going from the EDD card into the disk 2 card. So let's go ahead and we'll fire up the computer and the light comes on here which is the power light so that's a good sign and then we'll go ahead and we will boot up the fed I'm fed up software from Brutal Deluxe. I've got this in my Uni S disk Air over here so if I just go ahead and hit 6 it should boot off of that and then once that's booted, I'll switch it to use the actual disk to drive and we'll try and make a copy. Okay, so once the I'm fed up comes up, we'll hit O for options. And here we can change a whole bunch of different options. So the most important, so the most important ones are how many tracks do you want to copy? What step? So is it a full track, a half track, or a 0.25 track? We will tell it that the EDD card is in slot five and we'll tell it to do 0.25, so quarter tracks. Uh, so let's see, we want to change the directory for where to write these to our 32 megabyte hard drive on our SD card. I think we're good to go. Uh, so we're gonna try and copy Track Attack by Broderbun Software. And I'm sure there's copies of this out on Asimov, but just might be a fun one to try, so we'll go ahead and put that in. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit S to start the copy. And we'll call it track attack. Okay, so you can see that it looks like it's actually copying correctly, so we're just copying the first quarter track, the next quarter track, now three quarters of the first track, and then once we've copied the full track, that should increment and we'll just let it go until it's done. Okay, so it looks like the I'm Fed Up software copied the disk successfully. And so we copied it onto our SD card. And if you go ahead and take a look at the catalog, you can see at the very bottom there, we've got the three files, trackattack.edd, so that's the bit copy. We've got the trackattack.nib, which is the nibble copy, and then finally the nit, which is the timing information for the nibble copy. So what we could do next is just copy these files over to, say, a PC and go ahead and start analyzing the 
disk image and try and crack the copy protection. But I think I'll just leave that for another episode. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned a little bit about how to do soldering for surface mount devices. And we'll see you next time.